Hello students, welcome you all to TFR once again. I hope your preparation is going really, really very well. So, with the philosophy of organize, prioritize and revise for the upcoming prelims examination 2024 current affairs which is going to be the major chunk of your prelims paper. This is top 50 rapid current affairs for the month of June. The schedule as you all know, the time is flying by, pick up it right. On 11th Jan, we are going to talk about economic development. 12th January, we will be talking about polity, governance and international relations. 13th January, environment section in detail. 14th January, science and tech related highly important topics for the prelims examination. On 15th January, reports, intercepts, defense, different kinds of government schemes and art and culture information will be covered in detail. Now students, you can subscribe to current affairs crash course for the holistic coverage and to the point for the current affairs examination. Financial Services Institution Bureau, FSIB. First topic is very important because recent changes have been made. Already UPSC has asked the question on Bank Board Bureau, BBB. It was recommended by PJ Nayak committee. Why was BBB Bank Board Bureau? Why it was needed? Because our public sector banks, PSBs, scheduled commercial public sector banks were incurring very high NPAs. NPA. We have discussed in the previous month's current affair that already with the financial stability report of RBI, the NPAs, gross NPA as well as net NPA have decreased. More than that, we have seen that IBC has helped resolving 72% of cases. Okay, insolvency and bankruptcy code has helped solve 72% of cases. So, public sector banks may, how do we infuse more efficiency? Therefore, previously we had Bank Board Bureau, now it is completely replaced by FSIB, Financial Services Institution Bureau. This is going to be the headhunter of the top positions and different kinds of manpower capabilities will be identified in particularly public sector banks. Students, the question will be asked in the examination, it is for public and private sector both? No, it is only for public sector banks that you need to know. Previously, it was on the recommendation of PJ Nayak committee, it was there. Functions are almost the same, but now we are going to talk about what will be the function of it. It aims to bring a streamline efficiency. For example, if you go to HDFC bank, what you find you will be treated like a client. But if you go to a public sector bank, what will happen? You would be treated like a beneficiary. The loan disbursement, capital adequacy ratio and how the top management policies and administration is executing different kinds of steps will be streamlined and made at par with the private sector banks where efficiency is more. Now, the primary role is about the appointment of top echelons, manpower capabilities, make recommendations for the appointment of full-time directors, non-executive chairman of the state-run, remember this word, state-run financial services institutions. Ab ye bana kiske under mein hai? Under Department of Financial Services, which is under Ministry of Finance. Ministry of Finance. In the Department of Financial Services by replacing the Bank Board Bureau. Recently, what has happened that Cabinet Committee, Appointments Cabinet Committee has asked Department of Financial Services to make changes into it and form this body. Now, let's look at the structure of this body. We will have a chairman. The chairman will be nominated by the central government. Chairman will be nominated by the central government. Ek chairman ho gaya. Then, board will comprise of the secretaries of Department of Financial Services. Different secretaries will be there. Chairman of IRDAI and Deputy Governor of RBI. Not the Governor of RBI, but Deputy Governor of RBI. Three part-time members will be there who are experts in banking and three more from the insurance sector. We know that insurance penetration is increasing exponentially in India. It's going to be the new booming market in India. Okay. So, we know about Financial Services Institution Bureau. Next topic is Antar, Antar Drishti portal. Antar Drishti. Because any portal or any report by RBI is very important. RBI. Kuch kuch cheeze aur hai, ek saath dekhte hai. 
Antar Drishti is about financial inclusion dashboard. How much financial inclusion? We have taken certain steps for the financial inclusion. Students, financial inclusion is the touchstone for the questions in the prelims examination. Whether it be Aadhaar linked, different kinds of government schemes, they are talking about financial inclusion. So, to understand this, how much financial inclusion through various schemes, programs and policies we have achieved, we have this dashboard with the RBI that is Antar Drishti. Some acronym based questions are coming in the examination. Okay, it will provide the required insight to assess and monitor the progress of financial inclusion by capturing relevant parameters. Okay, different parameters get through. Abhi it is only for internal purposes, internal use of RBI. What other things they have launched? RBI has launched. One is SIMS. Central Information Management System. Central Information Management System has been recently launched by RBI and this is going to scheduled uh, particularly for different commercial banks then it will be including different kinds of financial institutions under it so that center in the centralized manner it can be monitored udgam portal portal for unclaimed deposits with the banks some sometimes these kind of things happen to you also college mein the ya kahin pe the you have opened a bank account students bank account but you had certain 4 5000 rupees deposited into it but you could not withdraw it Similarly, people have done the FDs, but they have not withdrawn it. If that time period is more than 10 years, then on this portal, with your registration, with your Aadhaar card number, bank details, you can understand that where my money is logged and you can claim those deposits. This is Udgam portal again launched by RBI, which is the flagship report of RBI. Utkarsh. Utkarsh is the flagship report of RBI. Ye sab cheeze yaad rakhni apne ko exam ke liye. Next topic is Pan India Electronic Trading Portal. That is ENAM. You all must be knowing about ENAM, Electronic National Agriculture Market Platform. This is the platform of different platforms. Basically, the objective is to integrate APMCs across the India. Different APMCs are there. Previously, the agri market you need to understand agri market was regulated by apmc act in 2017 it was amended and aplm act came in the, in that process as an amendment so agri marketing you need to understand students agriculture sector is very important for the prelims as well as for the mains into the prelims it has certain overlapping with the environment also and economy whenever you are talking about agriculture sector you need to understand it from the soil to the sale from soil how we are growing it Sowing of the seeds to the final sale into agri market. How we are going to regulate agri market? This is ENAM. But the holistic perspective you will get that from the sowing, what are the different government schemes? What are the programs that we have from the Kisan credit card starting? Then from growing soil health card, we have different schemes related to the growing of the seeds. What varieties of seeds we are having? Harvesting for the harvesting better technologies. What we can achieve? And even the fertilizer, fertilizer subsidies are there, seed subsidies there, storage. Basically, one more objective is their procurement. MSP, Government of India is having MSP in, in order to maintain a buffer stock. Storage, here also the problem is there. Storage, we do not have large silos, different kinds of seeds require different kinds of arrangement for their long term storage because they are perishable commodities. Then comes the marketing sector. Some cold storage value chain, logistics, we need to improve on all these factors for the agriculture sector. Marketing, here ENAM comes into the picture. Okay. Now, this ENAM provides a better price discovery to the farmers. Better price discovery across the states. A, a, a farmer with the production of a crop in Kerala can sell it to the northeastern districts as well if the farmer is getting better prices. Now, students, you need to understand auctioning happens auctioning has become easy for the crop producers they do not have to be dependent on so much of traders because it is an electronic platform it has brought transparency into the auctioning process moreover single market fees will be levied uh, single license will be required things have become become streamlined in this now what happens is e and wr from here, the question is going to come in the examination. Electronic negotiable warehouse receipt. 
previously how the trade was happening if the farmer needs to sell the produce physically it has to be transported into the trucks and lorries from one place to another then the transaction would have completed now these receipts for example in the large silos it is being stored and the farmer is having a negotiable warehouse receipt then the receipts ownership can be transferred without actually physically transferring the grains and this has a streamlined the trade into the commodities of agriculture some big players can hedge against the prices and hence farmer can have better price discovery as well moreover these negotiable warehouse receipts will help in getting loans even if the farmer doesn't want to sell the produce that with the help of these receipts he or she can get loan from the banks okay next topic is world's largest grain storage plan in cooperative sector as i told you buffer stock buffer stock has to be maintained why we need buffer stock because to meet the exigencies for example drought could be there any kind of emergency could be there for that we need a buffer stock to maintain the food security of the nation now this buffer stock sometimes overshoot the limit because of our pol policy of msp it is an open ended policy if farmers come to sell we have to procure government has to procure and we do not have adequate storage facilities available for that matter government is now focused on storage creation of world's largest grain storage plan here various ministries concurrence is required that we need to understand ministry of agriculture of course you can make it correct ministry of consumer affairs msp is regulated through ministry of consumer affairs students food and public distribution and ministry of food processing industries three ministries ministry of agriculture ministry of consumer affairs and ministry of food processing industries ye teenon ministry yaad rakhna exam ke liye apne ko okay so eight schemes identified for convergence from the different schemes funds will be allocated to it for the creation of this world's largest grain storage no need to look at all the schemes of different uh, ministries but ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare agriculture infrastructure fund is there infrastructure fund from here the money will come so three ministries with different various uh, schemes prime ministerial convergence will be there into the co uh, cooperative sector to meet out the demand for the storage open market sales scheme open market sales scheme as we have been discussing is even for the buffer stock we maintain food grains and different varieties buffer stock even for the onions perishable goods we maintain buffer stock now students open market sales scheme is done by fci food corporation of india ye kyun karte hain there are different reasons that could be attached to it वन रीजन कि अगर हमारा बफर स्टॉक से बहुत ज्यादा ओवर शूट हो गया इफ द स्टोरेज इज ओवर शूटिंग द बफर स्टॉक द लिमिटेशन ऑफ बफर स्टॉक देन ओपन मार्केट सेल स्कीम इज अप्लाइड एंड द ग्रेन्स आर सोल्ड इन द मार्केट थ्रू ओपन ऑक्शनिंग वन ऑस्पेक्ट कुड बी बिकॉज ऑफ द एम एस पी एंड बफर स्टॉक ओवर शूटिंग लिमिट नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑस्पेक्ट ऑफ ओपन मार्केट सेल स्कीम इज बिकॉज इन द लीन पीरियड in the lean period kabhi kabhi dekhoge all of sudden the prices of pulses are hiking up more than 200 rupees per kg the prices are there in that case to regulate the prices of the food grains and perishable commodities into the agriculture sector then fci go for open market sales scheme now who can participate into it of course any fpos big market players can participate there are certain limitations as any we can go and purchase one or two kgs of you know grains from there metric tons it is into metric tons from 10 metric ton to 40 metric tons we can purchase even state governments the question that will come in the examination is whether in this state governments can participate or not yes state governments can also part participate in open market sales scheme participate ka matlab kya hai they can also bid basically fci floats a tender in the newspaper ki we want to go for open market sale so you can do the bidding as an fpo as an organization we can do the bidding as well as state governments can do the bidding on it and they can procure from the open market sale scheme 
basically it is on cheaper prices okay two targeted public distribution scheme and other welfare schemes basically it is uh, so much grains are acquired into it and through the open market sa uh, sales scheme we are dispersing into the market okay the maximum quantity of the rice that a state government can bid in a single e auction is 25000 metric ton abhi ye cheez yaad nahi rakhni hai apne ko with diff for different rice wheat okay perishable commodities they might be varying but yes state government can participate into it jira jira cultivation you know in so many things jira as a spice we use whether you know it be cooking any kind of varieties of curries dals we use jeera do you know the fact that india produces world's 70% of cumin seeds world's 70% of cumin seeds and it has been very much trending these days that upsc ask you that question that this crop is native to india or not first of all this is a crop that belongs to mediterranean climate not an indian origin native crop belongs to mediterranean region but in india two state hain two states that produce 99% of the jeera that question can be asked in the examination what are these two states gujarat and rajasthan okay they produce 99% of the jeera production in india and that too from the gujarat you will be getting 70% 70% of jeera production india accounts for for global 70 production of jeera 70% of the production of jeera and gujarat accounts for 70% of india's production gujarat mein ek market hai apmc market that is unja market here you will find unja market here you have seen all of sudden the prices of jeera is increasing from 2017 to 2023 you have you would have seen it is skyrocketing the prices of jeera therefore the question is pertinent to come in the examination about its climatic conditions okay it is climate sensitive ye yaad rakhna hai humko theek hai this is weather sensitive crop so if climate change happens it will it is going to impact jeera otherwise it grows well in both tropical and subtropical climates and comes up well in all types of soils but well drained sandy loamy soils are suited the best but it is climate sensitive weather sensitive crop basmati rice okay before coming to the basmati rice let's talk about rice which country is the largest producer of rice in the world it is china china is in terms of production china is the largest producer of rice followed by india but in terms of export India is the number one exporter of rice globally. Some students find it, you know, very enticing. They feel proud of it. कि चलो हम first तो हैं export करने में. We want to boost our exports. Of course, we want to boost. But rice exporting rice is it good? Tell me in the comment box why exporting rice is not good. ये question already आ चुका है UPSC में. The world's largest exporter of rice in the world. this is india and this is something we should not be you know exporting because rice is a water guzzling crop the production of rice requires lot of fresh water consumption so basically exporting rice means exporting fresh water and through the world water development report we know by 2040 many countries 30% of the world is going to suffer from water scarcity severe water scarcity in in india also you are you are finding cert, certain gray blocks are there therefore exporting rice is not that good okay for the basmati rice we get premium values for exports so to that extent exporting basmati rice is fine but rice export is not that good if i talk in india which states are the largest producer of rice not basmati rice but rice first is west bengal west bengal followed by up followed by punjab West Bengal, UP, Punjab. This question can also come trends related to the rice crops. UPS, one or two questions directly you are finding in the examination all the time. So let's talk about basmati rice. 
which states are producing basmati rice and which state have got a gi status for the basmati rice that is important jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh punjab haryana largest area for the basmati rice largest area delhi up and uttarakhand into the up if i talk about gi status only some parts of western up have got the gi status it has got dekho yahan pe yaad kya rakhna hai what you have to remember for the examination it is not madhya pradesh mp also the students you you are going to confuse it with mp madhya pradesh but mp has not got gi tag for basmati rice it is good in oil seeds production particularly the soybean seeds production and rice is also produced but not basmati rice it was given to the basmati rice grown only in punjab haryana delhi himachal pradesh uttarakhand and parts of western up not J N K, Western U P and J N K. M P region is not included. Madhya Pradesh region is not included into it. So, with if you are talking about rice, it is susceptible to two major diseases: one bacterial, one fungal. Bacterial leaf blight and fungal leaf blast. Fungal leaf blast disease. Two diseases it is susceptible. Seventy-five percent of basmati rice is exported to West Asian countries. ये याद रखना है. Seventy-five percent of basmati rice, the demand is so much high. We eat lot of biryanis. Seventy-five percent of basmati rice is exported to West Asian countries. चलो. Next topic is strategic reserves for crude oil. Strategic reserves. We are calling it not the reserves of crude oil, but strategic reserves for crude oil. so in the energy sector students in detail that we'll be discussing in the crash course energy sector fossil based energy and renewable energy the energy transition we are talking about how this energy sector is transitioning although the demand for fossil based energy is also increasing because overall energy demand is increasing right now india has become the associate member of iea international energy agency in 2017 it had become recently iea invited india to become its full time member from associate member right now india is associate member to become its full time member india is the third largest energy consumer in the world india is the third largest energy consumer in the world that you need to remember therefore to become the full member of iea the eligibility criteria for the member countries basically it is under the aegis of oecd one of the criteria is had is that you have to be a member of oecd but another criteria eligibility criteria to become the member of iea is you have to maintain a minimum 90 days of reserves of petroleum 90 days of Previous years, fossil imports, fossil imports that we need to maintain. Right now, India's capacity is only nine point five days. So aggressively, India is going to increase its strategic petroleum reserves. Why do we need? First of all, you know, nineteen seventy three seventy four global oil crisis was there. We have cartels like OPEC. They you know regulate the prices to create more demand in the market less supply and more demand to increase the prices to maintain energy security in in terms of any kind of civil wars any kind of you know trade wars happening amongst the countries we need to maintain a strategic petroleum reserves okay this had been the background understanding why do we need it what is the present capacity and how much do we want to increase it we have right now a cumulative capacity of 5.33 million metric tons exact to nahi yaad rahega 5.33 but understand it is somewhere near 5 million metric tons crude oil capacity we have okay of crude oil and can meet around 9.5 days of country's oil demand country's oil demand we can meet up to 9.5 days in the examination you will get the questions like now india can meet only up to 50 days of energy demand without even importing crude oil that statement would be wrong you have to know where the figures are okay and 5.33 million metric tons what are the strategic locations the locations that you need to know existing crude oil storage capacity 
locations you know capacity you don't need to remember Vishakhapatnam Andhra Pradesh Mangalore in Karnataka and Padur in Karnataka Mangalore Padur and Vishakhapatnam existing strategic petroleum reserves and what are the upcoming at Padur we are going to have one more upcoming and another at Chandikol Odisha so which states they can also ask not the specific locations but the states Odisha Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka in three states we are making them okay so how do you imagine where we are going to store these strategic petroleum reserves million metric tons the quantity is million metric tons here what happens students the rocks big rocks are there what happened that these caravans when they are excavated for example salts are there into the rock we are exploring in the Rajasthan also going forward so when the salt is dissolved with the water then it has lot of space inside it where we can store it for longer durations very long durations for that matter we are exploring the reserves in salt caravan based reserves in the Rajasthan district and rock caravan based where the rocks can be excavated and created hole inside it and there they can be stored for longer durations this, this is the story of strategic reserves for crude oil so next topic is steel industry but before that uh, let's talk about the IEA little bit more IEA what are the important reports published by IEA world energy outlook report students this is important world energy outlook report and world energy investment report these two reports are very very important from the IEA what is the vision of IEA three E's three E has been the vision of IEA first is economic development second is energy security यही सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी एंड थर्ड वन इज एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन तो टू रिपोर्ट्स वर्ल्ड एनर्जी आउटलुक रिपोर्ट वर्ल्ड एनर्जी इन्वेस्टमेंट रिपोर्ट एंड थ्री ईज ऑफ आईईए स्टील सेक्टर स्टील इंडस्ट्री नाउ इट इज बूमिंग इन इंडिया राइट नाउ इन द स्टील प्रोडक्शन चाइना इज नंबर 1 ओके Recently, what has happened? India has surpassed Japan to become world's second largest producer of the crude steel. For the crude steel, still we are importing steel. Take as an it has been totally substituted. So, where the industrial location for the steel is there? It is an alloy of carbon and iron. It is an alloy of iron and carbon in little bit of manganese also. Iron, carbon, and little bit of manganese also. So, look at the industries. Okay. Chandrapur, Bhilai, Raurkela, Bukaro, Bhadravati, Salem, where the important industries are located, industrial location and the places because now, now we are booming for the infrastructure, steel is the, is the requirement for all kinds of infrastructure creation. What kind of alloy it is, this question can come in the examination and right now still China remains the global leader in crude steel production. They may give a sweeping statement that India ha has now become the largest steel producer in the world no in terms of you know exporting also we have not become one two three okay seventh largest exporter we have become yet still we are importing the steel okay now government of india has introduced temporary measure temporary measure minimum import price minimum import price to safeguard our domestic producers from the predatory pricing Predatory pricing means import price. For example, if China is putting a very low price for the steel, then how do we, you know, protect the domestic market? Therefore, minimum import price that we have discussed in the previous lecture. Minimum import price kya hota hai? Okay. So, that certain uh, price is fixed below which you cannot import and that's how our domestic market can compete well. Different, different steel types are there. Uh, scrap policy, steel scrap policy. Steel scrap policy, national steel policy, decarbonization in steel sector has been done. Then productivity linked incentives in steel sector. This is how government is boosting the steel sector. 
so for detailed and holistic coverage into a very organized manner going subject wise you can join the current affairs crash course for the prelims examination upcoming prelims examination you all know that how important current affairs plays a role over there moreover how the static and the pyqs particularly the pyqs with the topics there i'll be discussing previous year questions so that you understand the line the focus the area where upsc is asking the question which topics and how the question has been framed by that this knack you have to crack for the current affairs so you can join the crash course of course and keep following the tfr top 50 rapid current affairs thank you guys